today on Sugar Spun Run, we'll be making cookie dough brownies. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I am so excited to be sharing another carefully tested, well-researched, and perfected recipe. Today we are combining a few of my all-time favorite desserts. We've got fudgy brownies, we have a safe-to-eat edible cookie dough, and a rich ganache topping. We are going to get started by preheating our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and let's make that brownie base. Place 12 tablespoons of unsalted butter in a microwave-safe bowl. We're going to be putting this in the microwave in just a minute, so to help the butter melt nicely, I like to just Cut it into about 12 pieces. We'll add a half cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Alternatively, you could use a four ounce chocolate bar. And let's take this over to the microwave where we'll heat it in about 25 to 30 second increments, stirring really well in between until both the butter and chocolate are nice and melted and your mixture is smooth. While this chocolate is still a little bit warm, let's add a half cup of natural cocoa powder and a half teaspoon of instant coffee, which just really brings out that chocolate flavor. The warmth from the chocolate mixture is going to help bloom that cocoa powder, giving you a really nice, intense, fudgy chocolate flavor. And add 3 fourths cup each of granulated sugar and firmly packed light brown sugar. Okay, next we need two large eggs plus a single egg yolk, which helps add to the fudginess of the brownies. You always want to crack your egg separately just in case you get a little bit of shell in there, or if you get a bad egg, that's the worst. For the yolk, the easiest way to do this is just to crack that egg and then pass that yolk back and forth between the halves until the white has just fallen out. Add that to our brownie mix. Add a teaspoon of vanilla extract and a half teaspoon of salt. And stir everything together until it's completely combined. For this recipe, you only need one cup of all-purpose flour, so we'll stir that in as well. All right, so once everything is nicely stirred together, if you would like, you can add another 3 fourths cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips just for some added chocolate. Who doesn't like some extra chocolate? Now we're going to bake this in a nine by nine square baking pan. I am lining mine with parchment paper and I want a little bit hanging off the edges so that I can just lift it out of the pan once they're done baking and after I've topped it with cookie dough. So let's portion this into the pan and spread it so it's nice and smooth. You might recognize that this is my favorite brownie recipe that's already published on the blog. I love it because not only is it super chocolatey and fudgy, it makes a nice sturdy base that you can load with tons of cookie dough. We'll take this over to our preheated oven where it's going to need to bake for about 30 to 35 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean or with a few fudgy crumbs. This looks perfect, so we're going to set it aside and let it cool completely. Do not put your cookie dough on top until the brownies are no longer warm to the touch. Okay, let's move on to that cookie dough layer. Now, we have to make this safe for anybody to eat, so obviously we're not going to be including eggs, but did you know that there is a risk of E. coli associated with raw flour? We obviously want to eradicate any risk of anybody getting sick, so what we're going to do is we're going to heat treat that flour. We're just going to cook it by itself. You just wanna grab yourself a large cookie sheet, make sure it's lined with some parchment paper and have a little bit hanging over again. This recipe needs one and three fourths cup of all purpose flour, so that's how much I've measured out and I'm just going to sprinkle this evenly over the pan. It wasn't that even, so I'm going to use my spoon to just spread it because you want this to be a nice even layer so it cooks evenly. We're going to pop this into our 350 degree Fahrenheit oven and we're going to cook it for seven minutes. This flour is going to need to cool completely before you can add it to your cookie dough or you're going to have a runny mess on your hands. So for now, I'm just going to set it aside and I'm going to start making the rest of my cookie dough. We'll start with one cup of softened unsalted butter. Add one and three fourths cup of firmly packed light brown sugar, one fourth cup of granulated sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a half teaspoon of salt. While this could be done in a stand mixer, today we are going to be using an electric mixer to mix everything together. You want this mixture to be creamy and well combined. Okay, so we are ready for our flour now, and fortunately it should be cooled by now. But whenever you bake flour, sometimes it has the tendency to sort of clump together. So I'm going to grab myself a sifter and just set this over the bowl. And I'm going to pour the flour through a sifter. That way if there are any clumps, I can just break them up or remove them. The reason we use this parchment paper is that so we can neatly gather this and just kind of pour it through the sifter that way. It's much easier than spooning it over. You'll make a big mess. All right, stir everything together until that flour is completely combined. I always like to pause when I think I'm finished, grab a spatula, scrape the sides and the bottom of the bowl, just in case there are any pockets of flour hiding. And as you can see, we have some crumbly cookie dough down here. We don't want that. 
We'll use our mixer one more time to mix everything together. So this is going to go over our brownie layer. So the important thing is that it's nice and malleable. You want to be able to sort of spread it over the brownies. So if your cookie dough is super stiff, you're going to have a really hard time. If it's crumbly at all, what I would recommend is either you keep mixing, stir it a little bit longer, or you can add a tablespoon or two of milk or cream. I've never needed to do this, but I've gotten a lot of comments from people who've said that their dough is just too crumbly. Usually this is a matter of accidentally overmeasuring the flour, could be an altitude issue, I'm not sure, but if you run into that problem, that's just an easy fix for you. Now you would add that milk or cream at this point. Once you have everything nicely combined, we're going to add some mini chocolate chips. I'm adding one half cup of mini semi-sweet chips and I'll just use my spatula to stir everything together. All right, now it's time to layer this over our brownies. They should be completely cooled before you do this. I'm just going to spoon that over the brownies. Now it's not spreadable like an icing, so what I'm doing is I'm dolloping it and then I'm just using the back of a spoon to gently smooth it over the surface. You want it to be a nice even layer. Okay, we could stop here, but why would we when we can instead make things extra decadent? I like to top this off with a fudgy ganache-like layer. So to make that, you are going to need one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. And then I'm also adding two tablespoons of shortening or coconut oil. Now, if you don't have the shortening or the oil, you can leave it out, but I recommend adding it because what it does is it helps the chocolate to melt smoothly, to pour smoothly. It makes it cut really easily when you go to cut into these brownies and it's going to make it them easy to bite into. They're not going to be really hard on your teeth. Now, again, anytime you're melting chocolate, do it in increments. I'm just going to heat this in about 20, 25 second increments, stirring really well in between until both the shortening and the chocolate are completely melted. All right, let's pour this over our cookie dough layer. And I'm just using an offset spatula to kind of smooth that over the surface. So before you dig in, ideally you would wait for the chocolate to harden completely. It could take even a couple hours for this to happen at room temperature, or you can pop it in the fridge where it'll happen a little bit faster, but I prefer this dessert at room temperature. Obviously I don't have the patience to wait for the chocolate to harden completely, so we're going to go ahead and cut in right now. Now you can see here why I gave myself this parchment paper layer so that I could easily lift it. Could have been a little bit more generous on this side. I'm just gonna place it on a cutting board. And take a look at that. I think you guys can see why this is one of my favorite desserts on the blog. If you try it out, please let me know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>